Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, week three, almost in the books. And to help us out on the waiver wire, it's my guy, Frank Stanfield. What's happening, Frankie? Not much, Greg. Excited to be here to talk some waiver wire heading into week four of the NFL season. We're cruising by. We got a few New York Giants on the list as well. I know that gets you pumped up, Greg. Absolutely. I am super pumped up to talk about the Giants today. Specifically, where we begin? Right at the quarterback position. Because I got my man! Danny Dimes! Yes, that's right, Greg. Danny Dimes. Let's put this guy in the Hall of Fame already. A lot of people excited about Daniel Jones and what he did yesterday leading the Giants to the comeback against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was awesome. Statistically, I can't knock the guy. I know a lot of people were skeptical of the pick by Dave Gettleman, but he looked the part. 23 of 36, 336 passing yards, 9.3 yards per attempt yesterday, two passing touchdowns, an additional 28 rushing yards, and two rushing touchdowns as well, including the game-winning touchdown yesterday as well. The guy has athleticism. That's what we like for fantasy football, too. Normally, when we have these quarterbacks that, you know, we, we have some question marks about their arm and what they're going to do as a passer, if they can run, that makes all the difference when it comes to fantasy football. And this guy's actually really athletic. He had a 60-yard rushing touchdown at Duke as well as their starting quarterback. I understand it was against the Tampa Bay Bucks. You know, their defense... They are who we thought they were, uh, but heading into next week, they go up against Washington. This secondary is a little washed up. They're not as good as they once were. In their first two matchups, this is before the Monday Night Football game, they've allowed three passing touchdowns in each of those games. So I'm looking at Daniel Jones as a streaming option heading into week four. If you lost Drew Brees, if you lost Ben Roethlisberger, hell, I would use Daniel Jones over Baker Mayfield, who faces the Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore, in week four. There I said it. And you know what? The skill the skill set that he has, he's really good at throwing the ball short and to intermediate routes. Look at the players that they have on this team. That fits his skill set perfectly. Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram, they're going to get golden tape back. These are all players that can make plays after the catch. Put him in the Hall of Fame, Greg. Danny Dimes heading into week four. Waiver wire pickup. Daniel Jones on the year has more fantasy points thus far. Then Baker Mayfield himself. Bye weeks are beginning in week four. You may need to fill a spot for a guy like Jimmy G. Daniel Jones is a fine replacement. He is going to the Hall of Fame. Give me another quarterback, though, Frank, that you could be interested in. If Daniel Jones, you don't get him on the waiver wire because he costs too much money, who's another option where you could turn to? How about we go right across the field? Case Keenum on the other side going up against this New York Giants secondary. Just an absolutely brutal secondary and defense overall. Greg, I would ask you because you are the Giants fan here, but I don't think you have the answer either. What are they doing putting Janoris Jenkins one-on-one -on -one in coverage with Mike Evans? I, nobody has the answer there. It's just completely crazy what they were doing yesterday. But this secondary has been torched all season long. And before Monday Night Football, Case Keenum has actually looked pretty good so far. He's the QB 8 in fantasy points per game. He's got 600 passing yards, completing 69% of his passes. He's got five passing touchdowns already so far. And I just really like this matchup again. 380 passing yards and three touchdowns allowed to Jameis Winston in week three. How about in week one? They go up against Dak Prescott. They allow 400 passing yards and four passing touchdowns as well. So obviously, we'll go with the Hall of Famer Daniel Jones first. But if you miss out on him, you need a streaming quarterback heading into week four. You play in a super flex league. And for some reason, Case Keenum isn't owned already. Really like that matchup going up against the New York Giants. I like that you say for some reason, Case Keenum is not owned. He's not owned in your super flex league, Frank. Plead the fifth. But in all seriousness, I actually picked up Case Keenum earlier this week in preparation for next week. I just hope by the time Monday Night Football is over, Case Keenum is A, still healthy, and B, still has the job. Keenum against the Giants makes way too much sense. I love the matchup. You saw what Jameis Winston just did. Put Keenum in there if you lose out on Danny Dimes on the waiver wire. Let's move on to the running back position, and we're actually going to go back to the Giants. Stay in this game for this, because Saquon Barkley's going to miss some time with a high ankle sprain, which means the next man up is Wayne Gallman. He didn't look great yesterday, but if a starting running back's out there, you got to go pay it for him. Yeah, that's exactly right, Greg. As of now, the news that we have on Saquon Barkley is that he's going to miss, quote, a couple of weeks. He's out indefinitely with that high ankle sprain. You saw him celebrating after the win, hopping around on one foot. He had the crutches and everything. So he's going to at least miss two to three weeks, I would imagine, maybe even longer than that. And anytime we have the opportunity for a starting running back, you have to be in on that player. So if you own Saquon Barkley, you, you should have already had Wayne Gallman on your team. That's why we talk about handcuffing the running backs that you draft early on in fantasy football. But if not, you're going to have to spend a decent amount of your fab to make sure that you get him. It's not a bad matchup going up against Washington either here. 
But look, when it comes to Wayne Gallman, he's a fourth-round pick from 2017. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He had over 60 receptions in his three-year career at Clemson. The only other running back they have on the roster as of now is Elijah Penny, so he's not great. We've seen that so far. And believe it or not, Greg, your Giants offensive line, according to Football Outsiders, is ranked as the number one run-blocking offensive line. So again, you get that opportunity here. Not saying he's a must-start running back, but if you lost Saquon Barkley, he's going to at least be in discussion as a flex option. That's Wayne Gallman of the New York Giants. They didn't look all that good yesterday against Tampa Bay, but they have been able to create room. And Saquon Barkley, well, he's found the room to run. But it won't be Barkley in there anymore. It will be Gallman. This is his true opportunity behind a revamped offensive line with Daniel Jones at the quarterback to make his mark. If he doesn't, well, he'll be replaced soon enough by somebody like, I don't know, Rod Smith. C.J. Anderson, of course, out there as well. But right now, Wayne Gallman, the next man up for the Giants and for your fantasy team. Yesterday, before the Kansas City-Baltimore game kicked off, fantasy owners were sent into a frenzy because LaShawn McCoy was told, we were told, was going to be third on the depth chart. Of course, there he was, starting and, well, performing, scoring two touchdowns. It was very, very frustrating until the fourth quarter where LaShawn McCoy had to leave the game due to the ankle injury that he sustained last week. Darryl Williams was the next man up. It wasn't a committee with Darwin Thompson. It was all Darryl Williams, including uh, the game's ceiling possession. Now, if McCoy is hurt, or hurt enough to miss next week's game, and Damian Williams can't come back, there's no reason to believe that Darryl Williams won't still be the next man up, which means he should be the next man up for your fantasy teams. Yeah, Greg, and I'll piggyback off that as well. Even if McCoy or Damian Williams are active next week, I don't think that they're going to be 100%. And this looks like a full-on committee right now. I just want exposure to this Chiefs offense, the Chiefs offense that's averaging over 33 points per game so far this season. Darrell Williams played 37 snaps yesterday against the Baltimore Ravens that led all Chiefs running backs. And as you mentioned, LaShawn McCoy re-injured himself. So there's just a really clear opportunity here to get exposure to a really good offense and get a running back that looked pretty good against a solid Ravens defense. Darrell Williams yesterday, nine carries for 62 yards, 6.9 yards per carry, caught all five of his targets for 47 yards. I said this last week, Greg, when we were talking about Demarcus Robinson. Again, it's going to sound like, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm being, uh, I'm saying the same thing over and over here, but you just want exposure to this Chiefs offense. If you think about it from a football perspective, if you're a defense trying to stop this team, you have to worry about McCole Hardman down the field. You have to worry about Demarcus Robinson down the field. You have to worry about Travis Kelsey in the middle of the field, making plays basically everywhere. That leaves a lot of running lanes and a lot of opportunity to pick up big chunk plays as a receiver, as a running back for this Chiefs offense. So we still have to see what's going on with LaShawn McCoy and Damian Williams. But regardless, I think Darrell Williams proved himself yesterday, and he's probably going to earn more touches moving forward. Just pay attention to those injuries when it comes to the Kansas City Chiefs heading into week four. I think it's also important to remember that Kansas City doesn't care if they run the ball at all, right? Like, they'll use it only to set up the passing game, but that's it. It's Patrick Mahomes' show uh, throughout the game. The running back, if you get to the one-yard line, you can plunge in. A screen pass, we saw what they could do. But just remember, the running back, the running game, it's not going to be a huge deal. But you do want that running back, and right now, it may be Darrell Williams. Let's move on to the wide receivers, Frank, and that brings us to New England, who lost Antonio Brown, and yesterday, they may have lost Julian Edelman as well. He left the game in the second quarter with a chest injury. Well, we haven't received an update yet. It opened up more playing time for Philip Dorsett, especially without James White in the fold. It was a whole lot of Dorsett with Josh Gordon being in and out of the contest. Dorsett, we told you on Friday, go pick him up if you can. If you didn't, it's going to cost you a whole lot more this week. Yeah, that's exactly right, Greg. Following the release of Antonio Brown, you should have already had Philip Dorsett on your team, but he's still available in a ton of Yahoo Fantasy Football Leagues right now. Philip Dorsett played 70 snaps that led all Patriots wide receivers in Week 3 going up against the New York Jets. He had six receptions on 53 yards, scored a touchdown, had seven targets that represented 16% of the target share. The way that I'm viewing this offense right now is Josh Gordon's really been elevated to that Antonio Brown role. Julian Edelman is still Julian Edelman, assuming he's healthy. And Philip Dorsett has now been elevated to that Josh Gordon role. So much like the Kansas City Chiefs, we really want exposure to this New England Patriots offense. One of the best in the league right now. They're averaging over 35 points per game. And when it comes to Philip Dorsett, look, it's taken him a few years. Former first-round pick of the Indianapolis Colts. It hasn't worked out there. But he's latched on with the Patriots. He's made some plays. He's earned Tom Brady's trust. And we talk about that a lot when it comes to the Patriots, specifically Tom Brady. If you earn his trust, he's going to continue to go back to you. So 
you know, opposing defenses are trying to stop Josh Gordon and Julian Edelman. They have to worry about James White catching passes out of the backfield and Sony Michelle grinding it up the middle. Philip Dorsett, while, you know, he might not get the most consistent targets, he's going to be able to make the most of those targets. And if there's anything wrong with Julian Edelman, that, that'll just open up more of a target share for Philip Dorsett. So honestly, Greg, you really just want exposure to this Patriots offense. You want as much exposure as possible to that Patriots offense. And Brady has a connection with Philip Dorsett. We have now seen that through the first couple of weeks. And if you dropped him when Antonio Brown was signed, you need to pick him back up now that A.B. is gone. Especially with all these injuries, Philip Dorsett's going to have a role, and a sustainable role in this offense. The floor may be not all that high, but we know what the ceiling could be. Philip Dorsett, well worth picking up this week. In Pittsburgh, it hasn't been all good since Big Ben went down, as this team lost yesterday. But Deontay Johnson, well, he showed up, and he scored a touchdown in his first career start. What could Johnson be with Mason Rudolph as quarterback? I think we're probably going to get some inconsistency here from Deontay Johnson, but the one thing Mason Rudolph has been able to do well, even going back to college, and we saw it yesterday, is throw the deep ball. Now, I assume James Washington's going to get a few of these deep ball targets every single week as well because they have a connection. Going back to Oklahoma State, Mason Rudolph and James Washington played together. But yesterday... It was Deontay Johnson. He caught that deep ball, 39-yard touchdown, finished with only three catches, but 52 yards, that touchdown, as we mentioned, six targets that represented 23% of the target share. If you drafted a Dante Moncrief or a James Washington as your wide receiver four, wide receiver five coming into the season, you're going to want to grab Deontay Johnson off waivers. And heading into week four, the Cincinnati Bengals are – the team that the Steelers are going to be face, facing, and their defense could be had. They, you know, they haven't been a great defense thus far. We saw them get torched specifically by the San Francisco 49ers in Week 2. Debo Samuel caught a touchdown against them. So this is more of a, a depth play. You're going to want Deontay Johnson for your bye week replacements. I'm not sure he's going to be an every-week starter, but in Week 4, sneaky going up against the Cincinnati Bengals. And it's worth mentioning that the Pittsburgh Steelers have been pretty good at drafting wide receivers over the years. They just drafted Deontay Johnson in the third round of the 2019 NFL Draft. So you can hang your hat on that as well. More of a bye week replacement, but he's getting the opportunity to start. Looked pretty damn good yesterday, Greg. I agree. He's more of a bye week replacement than anything else. But Johnson getting the start now, uh, and we don't know what this passing offense is going to be. The floor is low, but hey, he could spark. Maybe he sparks. Well, maybe you'll get some points out of your flex spot during a tough bye week. Let's move on to the tight end where last week we nailed it with Will Disley. Talk more about him in a moment. This week, who's the tight end that you're most after? It's Dawson Knox, Greg. And if you didn't know the name Dawson Knox before yesterday, you do now. You saw that 49-yard catch. If you haven't, please just go watch that 49-yard catch that Dawson Knox had yesterday. He basically took the souls of two Cincinnati Bengals defender. Really, really athletic profile here from Dawson Knox. Wound up leading the Bills in receiving overall in Week 3. 67 receiving yards on three catches. He had a touchdown on four targets. I uh, played 43 snaps, ran 21 routes. Both of those numbers led Bills tight ends yesterday. So this kid's coming along very well, very quickly. We see, again, it's only his third game in the NFL as a rookie, and he's already leading the tight end position in both snaps and routes run for the Buffalo Bills. And I mentioned how athletic he was. He tested really, really well. Both his 40 and his speed score ranked in the 85th percentile of the NFL Combine. That's according to playerprofiler.com. So the athleticism is there. There's an opportunity here. Yes, Josh Allen likes to throw the deep ball. John Brown is his number one target. They like to target Cole Beasley over the middle of the field as well. But heading into week four, the Buffalo Bills are going up against the New England Patriots. The Patriots have done well against tight ends, but the Bills are going to need every single person to step up if they're going to have a chance of competing with the New England Patriots. And not only that, look, if you play in a dynasty or keeper league, I really think that there's some long-term upside for Dawson Knox here as well. So hopefully he builds off the support. The athletic profile is there. I'm in on Dawson Knox heading into week four, Greg. We'll see what Dawson Knox can be, if he can be a consistent option for Josh Allen in that offense. In week four against the Patriots, I don't know. But going forward in dynasty, as Frank said, he could be a value. We haven't found the tight end yet that Josh Allen is going to rely on. Maybe Dawson Knox and his athletic ability is that guy. Now, I mentioned last week our tight end choice of Will Disley, who scored a touchdown on the untimed play at the end of the game yesterday. But even still, he was really solid in the PBR. And going forward, he needs to be owned in more leagues. 
especially this week, Frank, where he goes up against a team that allows the most yards, the most points, the most touchdowns to tight ends in all of football. Yeah, that defense is the Cardinals' defense. We'll get into that in a little bit. But Will Disley, I still don't understand why he's just 45% owned on Yahoo right now. Two massive games back-to-back here yesterday against the Saints. You mentioned the touchdown that he scored super late in that game, but finished with six receptions, 62 yards, and that touchdown on seven targets. Those seven targets were second on the team behind only Tyler Lockett, who is obviously stepping up as this team's number one receiver in the passing game. Going up against the Arizona Cardinals, Greg, you mentioned it. What they've allowed to tight ends this year has been massive. We saw yesterday Greg Olson, Two receiving touchdowns against this Cardinals defense. In week one, it was TJ Hawkinson, monster game, over 100 yards, and a receiving touchdown. Week two, going up against Mark Andrews, over 100 yards, a receiving touchdown as well. Will Disley is going to eat the Arizona Cardinals alive in week four. Hell, Greg, if you were tight end eligible, I would pick you up and start you against the Arizona Cardinals. That's how good this matchup is. But even without the matchup, you should own Will Disley especially if you drafted a Jared Cook. That hasn't worked out, obviously. Tight ends are really hard to find. Will Disley should be owned in more than 45% of leagues. I agree. Tight ends are not easy to find. And Will Disley going against Arizona, no freaking brainer, man. And he's involved in this offense with Russell Wilson. Yes, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. They're certainly a part of it, but so is Will Disley. He is a constantly targeted piece. You can rely on Disley. He may not exactly be a top tight end besides this week, but he's certainly a reliable one. Finally, here on the Hurry Up, let's get to our streaming defense of the week, Frank. Not a lot to choose from, so where are you headed? I'm going to go to the Indianapolis Colts, who are hosting the Oakland Raiders heading into week four. I don't think the Colts' defense is an amazing one, but they are a solid defense. They're a bend-but-don't-break defense. And when it comes to going up against the Oakland Raiders, I just don't see a lot of offensive weapons there. Outside of Darren Waller, who's been awesome. Josh Jacobs, I think, is going to be a player as well. He still needs to get better in pass protection overall. But we've seen when the Oakland Raiders fall behind, which I think can be the case in week four against the Indianapolis Colts, Josh Jacobs doesn't really see the field much. When they lost Antonio Brown, Tyrell Williams was elevated to the wide receiver one for this team. I like Tyrell Williams. He scored a touchdown in each game. He's a solid player, but he doesn't really scare me that much. For example, if you double team him, I don't really think that there's another receiver on this team that you're really worried about that's going to beat you. And when it comes to this Raiders offense overall, they're averaging just 16 points per game on that side of the football, 322 total yards of offense per game so far in the first three weeks of the season. And I like to target defenses, in this case, the Indianapolis Colts, going up against an offense that I think will be playing from behind. So we're going to see more dropbacks, which will give you more opportunity for sacks, more opportunity for turnovers as well. The Indianapolis Colts, a team that I'm looking at streaming in week four against the Oakland Raiders, Greg. Well, the past few weeks, the Colts have won games thanks to their offense. It's been impressive. But don't forget about what the defense has been. They've done their job, and that's why the Colts sit pretty at 2-1. and one. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Frank, good luck in your waiver wire this week. Thanks, Greg. As I've mentioned every week, we'll be doing a lot of those together. Let's see how many Danny Dimes shares we can actually end up with. True story. Frank tried to quit all teams with me last night. I wouldn't let him. Hopefully the waiver wire goes well, so he'll stay as part of my team going forward. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.